Conan Exiles was already a fairly extensive game to learn before the additions of Age of Sorcery and now Chapter 2. There's a bunch of recipes you should definitely consider venturing out and learning before you even attempt a lot of the sorcery stuff. I will be showing you where to learn sorcery in this video, but that is included. I'll be showing you where to learn armors that you may not know exist, why you may want to learn them, the benefits to them, food recipes, why you want to go learn them, which ones are actually worth learning if you don't want to just catch them all, and some of the really dope weapon recipes recipes and a few little extra ones along the way. I'm Elibet, I play a lot of survival games and we're learning recipes today so let's get going. So we're starting, oh can I speak? We're starting off this episode a little bit simple but a lot of people still don't know that they can learn multiple religions. There's religious teachers scattered all about the map so you can gather all of them. Not so important on single player unless you're after certain recipes. I'll show you a bunch of those benefits more towards the end of the video but to go around and learn them all here are the locations. Log? Log? Yeah come to shaman's rise I'm not very good at speaking tonight do bear with me one of the next ones i like to come get is set although i usually do pick set as my starter one sometimes i pick zath if i can't be anyway i digress come over here to mech kamosis's spire and butcher all the names in this game and um come learn yourself some set he's really good for some set arrows but yeah i'll go into a bit more of that later on in the episode like i said and just a hop skip and a jump down the valley into this cave of eternal doom you can come visit this mate and he'll turn you, learn you, learn you, like I said, words, Jesus. He'll learn you, Zah. He'll teach you, rather. And that's just down in Scuttler's shortcut. And while you're in the neighborhood, you might as well come over to Mitra's little pond over here and acquire some Mitra religion. Now, journey up north to Outcast Camp and talk to this big friendly guy, the literal only friendly one of them. Well, usually you could talk to him and learn your meal. There we go. Struggling if he didn't want to teach me things. Little story off him if you already have him. And if you are struggling to get to cold places, I have a video that's recently come out that yet about the map using different armor and food methods. So do check that. This video does also help with that one, with learning recipes. They are kind of linked and benefit each other. Learn to Keto. You need to come to over the Pagoda of Boundless Lust. The name's not coming up because I'm here. Ah. And talk. These guys are all aggressive as always. I am in god mode, so they're not attacking me. This place has kind of changed now. There's more sorcerers here than there used to be. There's one there one on the other side one just here another priest and people up by these campfires can be like any name dude underrated as hell place i advise coming here anyway we got a free relax emote and you talk to this priestess to learn pleasure palace of the ghetto double sag is mildly more complex as you have to do a whole ass dungeon before you can get their religion or happen to have a friend who got extra meat but you talk to this guy learn alchemist and you can make the potions at home doesn't cost feral flesh costs other stuff um but you should should learn this recipe anyway because then you can teleport to set city really easily by doing this but we'll buy that Whoop. drink it it doesn't last long so drink it quickly teleports you here if you drink the water it takes you to sepimaru but you got to complete this dungeon if you want a detailed guide on that see my actual dungeon guide linked wherever uh it i'm yeah uh, you hack up the guy essentially and eat his flesh though and i'm gonna chuck sorcery in, in the religious category not really but it's not really particularly in any other the category kind of weapons i don't know let's chuck it in in this kind of area you come over here to shell back hello talk to this book but if you are afraid of losing your book and you want to take extras because you've traveled a long way you can just drop them on the ground like that talk to the book again and it will give you more things that's right, it only gives you another tome because you can craft the ones once you've talked to the book once. But you can uh, just drop the tome on the ground and gather a few of them while you're here. And also ice bridge across with your newly acquired, excuse you, newly acquired sacks of power and go get the boxes over there. Now, yeah. onto cooking recipe. Now, no wild particular order because they're not scattered particularly like one to ten around the place like you kind of expect. They are all over the shop. But you can come to here to Tower of the Bats. Oh, there we are. We're going to get Barrel Feast, Century eggs, bush jerky, oyster omelettes. Now none of this is particularly fantastic but um you know it's worth getting if you want to collect them all. They kind of last a long time I guess this bush jerky. I know it's kind of my recipe but it's here. This one I'm about to show you is not a cooking recipe but while we're at the summoning pit I thought I'd show you summoning pit summoning place. This one anyway it teaches you a bunch of skull recipes that you can plant around your base on little heads on pikes and stuff. Add a little stomp into your garden then head across this way 
Okay. There's also a bunch of emotes and stuff around here. Oh, I can do another, I can do another. I can do a emote video if you like and show you where they all are. They come with fun stories I can read. And come here and learn cooking six and one because two fizz for some reason. I fear for my life. These Tafari cannibals are not, excuse me, what am I reading? These Tafari cannibals are unthinking brutes with no discipline and I do not know how much longer I can convince them to leave me alive. The cooking pots reek of human flesh and my trusty book of recipes counts for naught amongst these savages. Ugh, my reading skills as well. Can't speak, can't read, still trying. Um, I read the knot after the can I mush. Anyway, dyslexia, let's go. And that's gonna teach ya these good things. Salted pork is nice because it gives you a strength buff. That's definitely a good recipe to get. Spice pork's gonna help you get around in the cold. Same with spice soup. Corrupting brew is gonna corrupt you. Flavored gruel, I think, is preferred by someone for something. Can't 100% remember what. Fiery bug soup, I don't particularly care for it, but apparently it gives you heat now. So that's kind of cool as well, because remember, it's fairly cheap. Yeah, on to the next one. These good things. Party feast definitely being the honorable mention here. It's a fairly decent heal, not as good as it used to be still pretty decent and recommend and bug kebabs are kind of worthy as well because they're super cheap and just like you live around a lot of bugs or you have a lot of compost have a live around a lot of bugs grubs that are on the ground like in the beach area you know what i mean and to the next recipe if you didn't clock where we were on the map before because i can't remember if i um wrote it the summoning place now come over here to this little camp, Drifter's Rest. It's a good camp because this guy has a chance to be a named dude. So you can come and knock him out fairly easily. There's also a random exile that'll wander around. Sometimes the alligator will kill them. Crocodile, whatever they are. Australian, I should call them crocodiles. They definitely are. Anyway, digressing again. Come here, get recipe 10. High and low have I searched for the ultimate flavor and yet I have still not found it. These pages are what I leave behind. Some legacy. At the very least, I culinary experiments will not be in vain if others learn from them and that's going to teach you these fun recipes honorable mention being cooked pork feast which is a very decent hill and potion of endowment which gives you charisma and if you got nudity on a bunch of other stuff on a male character it's interesting to say the least venture north to trapper's cabin am i gonna be able to see it there we go well, anyway we're there on the map come here get cooking five Did that not give me a story well a story to read here folks now this one's a great recipe i definitely always come and get this one as soon as i can hearty stew excellent hills but demon sausages they're not that great not that worth it mm, unless they improve that sometime rhino head soup also not that worth it considering you also get lasting feasts which does the same thing and is much cheaper but it will give you bonus encumbrance so it's really Really nice and spice livers another spicy food that's pretty cheap to make that'll get you around with some of those newly acquired recipes you might want some beverages to wash them down for some strange reason even though getting drunk doesn't do much for you anymore but hey role play you can come over here dogs of the desert as well as learning belly dance down in that pit come up here and I'm specialist brewing one up on the little ledge it's gonna teach these guys you used to need absence for feast of the taketo but they're not particularly fantastic anymore you probably just make feasts of yog you got all your really religious religions now so you can make the tier three altars and craft their religious feasts in your oven you don't longer actually need the altar you just need to learn the altar correction on my words as long as you have an oven stove rather you can um make the feasts in there and they're pretty decent and i suppose because i showed the decor at the summoning place i'll show you this one too you can click on this poll here and learn the desert banners as well as having the mitra teacher muriel's hope oasis this also holds where is it gone the guy i'm cooking seven this wretched heat i feel that it spoils meat faster than a she might runs from battle my search for the essence of pure flavor brought me here but i fear nothing can be learned from this scorching hell what tidbits i have managed to learn i have written down at the back of this journal some more useful than others ironically like its little search buddy this recipe is fairly mum. i can't recommend or unrecommend any of them experiment with them if you want it's just kind of a catch them all thing here. What a lovely day to be recipe hunting. Over here on these particular towers, they don't have a name, but they're on the back end of the ruins of Old Nabatu. 
climb up to the second tower, you'll find the old aloe soup recipe. These highlands chill me to the bone. I would much prefer the warm comforts of the Luxor brothels back home in Stygia. As if the climate was not enough, the uncultured Brits here have no appreciation of cuisine. I have been thrown out of the nearby village when suggesting that a diet consisting mostly of raw mammoth flesh and bear and beer rather would not be healthy in the long run. A curse upon them. May their ears turn into assholes and shit all over their shoulders. At least they allowed me to pack up my belongings, including my book of recipes. Holy whoa, I did not know the aloe soup escalated like that. Yeah, that's the aloe soup recipe story, I guess. Cooking too teaches you aloe soup, spice soy and some berry juices, all of which are a little obsolete. They are kind of a remnant of a long gone or era of PvP where aloe soup was king and berry juice was worth crafting. It's still nice to have to remember. It does heal you a little bit. Aloe soup's pretty decent for a little bit of heal. Kind of expensive though. Keeper than potions doesn't heal as much. But yeah, I'm here to show you these things so you can come touch them all, experiment with what you like eating, have my random opinion on it. I personally like to make aloe soup just because it reminds me of good times where it was actually good. And like if I'm not fighting people, hey, why not? While you're touching the obelisk over at Mount, my cute little house in the background, don't forget to look down and get specialist brewing too. Berries and wine in all glory, but when you need the strength of a bear and thunder in your heart, nothing beats a good booze up, like all Australians said ever. Within these pages, I have written down the recipes that I know for some of the most foul-smelling, bear-tasting, eye-watering, home-brew booze I have ever had the misfortune of tasting. These Sumerians seem to enjoy them though. Go figure, sour drink for a sour people. Hmm. And you're gonna get these guys, and uh, all of them will keep you warm if you want to use alcohol to keep you warm. Other than that, um, I don't think any of them are used in cooking anymore, but maybe. And a lot of these things are used in AOC and e -well recipes and stuff as well, so if you play with mods, it's handy to know where these things are. While you're around mounds, come to this particular hut over here. There's um usually a, a fighter in here. They can be a Delanisa, a Sumerian Berserker. It's, I often find Delancia, Delanisa, however you want to say a name in here. Watch this recipe and get you cooking three. Despite the hostile creatures roaming the hills and the mountains, I've managed to convince my brother to accompany me on the hunt for food. He's almost 13 now and must learn the way of the warrior sometime. Today is a good day as any. I have my father's notes about the ingredients together and we will set out while the sun is still high in the sky. This is another really great recipe to come get. You're not going to get any of the others. Meaty mashups, a super cheap food to make, I think requiring only feral flesh and savory meat, both raw. Super cheap, it's where you learn enhanced gruel. Cleansing brew, which if you can't find a dance heal of soup away from Conan, that will cleanse you if you don't want to have a bunch of corruption. Spice tea, super important for getting about. Herbal tea, the base to spice tea and iced tea. You can get around that if you watch my other video on armor and foods to get around in heat and cold. I have um, some tips on how to get around having to craft it yourself, but if you do want to craft it yourself, this is where you get it. Yeah, definitely a decent recipe to come learn. Not only a reliable source of a named Nordheimer fighter, Elian's Watch, just here near the Great Dam, as I can't see my mark because I'm already here. We're going to get cooking nine. I have been attempting to scavenge for more mushrooms in the area, but have found none. I bought my notes so that I could show my companions the pictures of which mushrooms to forage. Last night, I cannot say that, brought a red speckled one that I have not seen before, Aminita muscaria. I have made some notes on potential uses for it, but I will not be the first to try them out. Smart move, bro. Smart move. It is always best to not eat weird foreign mushrooms that you're not. A hanji on, for sure. Another great recipe to get, not so much for personal consumption, but more for a thrall food. You might be used to chucking steak or feral flesh or gruel, which is the standard on them, but uh, you can actually make the mushroom stew very cheap. It's literally one amanita, or one puffball, and it lasts a lot longer than the gruel. Super worthy, especially if you happen to live near the forest or you go to Double Sugs dungeon a lot or Mounds of the Dead and you get a lot of puffballs and amanitas. I usually use that in my thrall wheels. The Marion Feast is another great one to learn. And um, yeah, a couple of these other guys. This recipe is a little different from the other recipes, but you'll find it over here at Port Sam near Buccaneer Bay. It's good to teach you some pirate cuisines, which gives you some nice little perks as well as some spicy. More crates washed all today. Silk cracked pottery, jewels, the usual booty the sea provides us with. 
this time there were boxes with rare spices to the likes of which I have never seen. Its zesty texture burns the throat but warms the body and brings out the sweat. I'd better start cooking. Jamala will have me hung hanged for making her wait. Now you are gonna need rare spice to make pirate cuisine so that's why it's a little bit different as well to the regular ones and you get that by killing various different um pirate guys. You come over to this lady though and buy some spiced fowl for some coin. It used to not expire so it was extra super good but it does now. With a warming up feature and a plus 60 to health, they're kind of decent. 4-5 gold, mm, is it worth it? I don't know if the warming up stays for a lot longer than regular spicy for sure. Wow she's a bit bright up here. But anyway I guess we'll uh, segue into some different recipes as we're now done with the cooking recipes. I hope you enjoy adventuring around the map to discover them all. So we're going to start off with the black hand armor as we're already in the neighborhood. Buccaneer armor I should say. Click on the armor like it's gonna do stuff. Black Kosal garb to be specific. Our quartermaster found a chest amongst the flotsam containing a number of peg legs, hooks and eye patches. I find them rather dashing. We will begin using them immediately even if it means cutting off limbs to do so. I like the spirit. I have been a bit lazy to make a peg leg for my transmogs but um now I got the recipe. That's the thing that's gonna be happening. If you've ever gone to the Black Galleon ship and you live anywhere on Noob River, you've probably run past this camp a time or two. Scoundrel's Gateway. I in fact actually had to search this armor to begin with when I very first started the game because I could not find it anywhere and I was so confused. And we live right down here. I'd run past it so many times and I never noticed the little guy just chilling over here. But this is where you learn hyena fur armor. Back over in the jungle at the Witch Queen Palace, yeah. come to this little mini dungeon, fight these guys, kill the Witch Queen. It's not too hard, definitely doable well earlier than level 60. You do a level 30 with shitty iron stuff. Might take a little bit more time. Once the purple wall is down, touch her throne and that's going to teach you some Lemurian armor and that's super decent beginner armor for sure because you don't have to craft it yourself. You can then get stuff from these guys down at the Pagoda of Boundless Lust and then just repair it once you know the recipe, which is dope, rather than having to make repair kits and all of that. And you also get a key, which is um a cool little thing that I'll show you at our next armor recipe. If you're not climbing around on all the rooftops in Serpent Maru looking for steel and resource boxes all the time like me you may not have noticed the little relic hunter armor guy up here. That's going to teach relic hunter armor, decent light armor, early game. If you happen to have a Rasmus key from killing the witch queen you can go inside here. I just went home and got mine quickly. This is particularly good on PvP server because not everyone's carrying one around on you. If you happen to be full of loots and being chased you can dip in here that'll close hopefully before they find you. Did you to close a bit quicker but it's probably for people like me doing that and if a sandstorm does hit you can be safe from a sandstorm in here as well yes story phrasma continue about your journeys Quib come dip back into cooking recipes. I realized I forgot cooking recipe before over in the mounds as well. My fellow Sumerians think me mad for foraging in the foraging in the wilds. Do they believe we can survive on rabbit and mead forever? I say to hell with that. The dead may roam the area and wolves howl echo throughout the hills, but that does not mean we should take no chances at all. I have just about had it with mead and rabbit. I have scrolled down some notes about what to collect and will set out tomorrow to get the proper ingredients. I believe I almost forgot to even put this in here because you definitely want to come get a cooking recipe for because it gives you exalted exquisite meat. If you happen to use agility weapons it gives you plus 15 percent. It's much like the salted pork but for agility. Just to clarify I am in god mode. These people will attack you usually so prepare to fight some of them on your way to get these recipes. Come over to the black keep and you can find him. You cannot. You can run around if you see my dungeon raiding guides you would have know exactly how to do that by now. Touch this recipe guy apparently not allowed to touch him again. Right. Tell me your story. Well they teach the silent legion and if you have a named armor you can make redeemed legion which is a pretty decent set because it has two points in hot and cold much like this stuff having two in cold but it's in both so you can get around pretty much everywhere without having to carry food or water. I go into more detail in that in my other armor and food video that I mentioned earlier. 
Uh, so chapter two changed some things. Of course, after I'd already recorded, so don't mind the fact that I'm wearing different clothes. I'm adding these in after. And also I noticed I forgot a few anyway. But here we are. If you're looking for the Skellis Cultist armor, which is excellent, even though it's um, been nerfed a little bit and now costs medium padding, which in my opinion is probably cheaper than the light padding affected. Anyway, uh, you need to come to the volcano now. Instead of when it was first added, you did the Grave Matters event. And then I think the Sorcerers and at the Summoning Place event gave you them sorcerer's inventory and that but now you come here to near the shrine of the oracle and just here see them guys and you walk down here to where i'm super full where the taskmaster and all that spawn down there there's a little book right here touch that and you get it Pride of Azir armor. Like the other armors i'll show you the stats at the end of this video but you want to come here to mounds of the dead Come first to the Ravage Burrows. Gotta go in there and kill Gothrad. He's going to give you some stuff. Mostly the crest or the journal. I think he gives you the crest. And to get the journal, you've got to go to the mound next door. Just over this way. Pop onto the roof. And then this box just here will have the journal. Now I am in god mode and these blue guys will attack you. But we are over by the cursed mounds. By the obelisk. Sorry, I should have finished my sentence there before running in. And in theory, there's a boss guy in here that you kill. Okay, I just had to go out of god mode to draw him out. But uh, yeah, you gotta kill him. He is a little bit spicy. He gonna give you Thorga's recipe fragment. Now you went head across to this little mound. Go inside its mazy middle. Talk to our ghosty friend. And you can give him all the fragments, much like combining the heart pieces, which hasn't been included in this, but it's not very useful. So anyway, um, you can do that at the sand down here. Somewhere? No, here. Yeah, this one. Uh, to combine your stuff to get a fragment for the, removing your bracelet and all that. That's the idea, Gross, whatever. But yeah, now you got that recipe for part of a seal. So say you've actually fought the arena champion, you've got a good build, a good thrall, and you've won, or you've chosen to chase past her. Whichever the case, in Khalil's stronghold here, you will first, I can't get the name, come across the champion armor recipe, just around the corner from where she resides. Now it's going to teach champion armor, which is not really that worth it, but the pants used to give you cleansing, so I liked to wear them because they got rid of your corruption, but now you kind of want corruption. But if you like the look of it for transmogging, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. In the Iron King, or whatever his actual name is, room, you'll find a couple of tablets near the exit door that are going to teach you both the armor that he's wearing, the Godbreaker armor essentially, as well as the kits, like these. So you'll be able to like put fancy kits on your weapons, which is Definitely come here and learn those as soon as you can. It gives you armor pen and damage to weapons. So it's definitely worthy. Like my axe with that on would have been like 69 and something else with just regular kit. But not, I think it's like 69 and 12. Maybe I get a lot more armor pen for this. This one's usually like 62 and 9. So that's, it's decent. I don't often use the armor kits that it comes with. The master armor plating is probably my preference if I am going to use them. The bulk plating is not really worth it in my opinion for the damage resistance it gives and I don't particularly use gliding joints but some people swear by them. I literally just use the shitty lightning kit on everything. All me old fashioned. But if you want them this is where to use them. I mostly come here for these bad boys. It's so green in here. He's a good source of demon blood though. He's pretty easy. Don't be put off by the area. But one of our next recipes is the Burrow King. His little tablet's hiding over here and and that's going to teach you his fancy ass weapons. It's actually like, to be fair, apart from the reach that the pole arm has, I'd say the ancient pike's probably better. With the ancient pike doing 48 damage without even a thrall, and the pole arm only doing 43, but also costing hard and still, uh, yeah, it does have a lot more reach though. Kind of worthy. And you can skin it with other weapons, other, um, like a trident or something that has less reach, and it will still have the reach of pole arm. I might have that mixed up. You can put the pole arm and skin it on shittier stuff and make it have a reach. I don't know. Experiment with that. Let me know in the comments which way it is around. I don't use pikes, so do with the knowledge what you will. Ah, the first temple. You definitely want to have some
some spicy foods and some decent, maybe even that really deemed legion we just went and learnt before armor or the Godbreaker armor. As you can make it chilled or regular, which regular keeps you colder, chilled keeps you warmer. So you can make a mix set as well, but you definitely want some of that because these giants will mess you up with cold attacks and it's just generally quite cold in here. Oh, I'm thirsty. So I highly advise that and wear decent armor, but you can choose it, just run through. Killing them is a good source of thick hide. They drop spicy foods a lot as well as some other cool stuff that I'll let you discover for yourself. But because we're right here and we've kept doing this with all the other ones, let's include the decor in random sections. Although I did miss the ones at mounds, we can always go back. These are some bonus decor. Here is where you learn totems. And there's also a lot of black ice around here you can quickly pick up on your journey. Now this giant's less friendly than the Yumiya teacher. He will attack you. He is a boss. He's also an achievement if you haven't killed him before. But you can also just run past him. You don't have to kill him, unlike the ones in the Kari dungeon, which I'm I will include in this a bit later. But they're kind of a special case. But uh rather than the witch queen, you don't cl click on the throne. We fully thought that the first time. No, the tablet's here. Get that and you'll go get the black ice weapons. Wow, the lighting is terrible in here from every angle. But uh yeah, now you got your black ice weapons. Come down and around the corner through the little tunnel to is the forge, which is now much easier to click on. I say that well, it's difficult to click on. Put your black ice and hardened steel weapon in here. Mind the hardened steel weapon does not have to be have any durability. They can be broken. You can put a completely broken black ice pick in here. I mean, hardened steel pick that guy and you can still get your black ice pick your weapon whatever and it's gonna give you these guys the picks aren't wildly worth it definitely go learn obsidian which we're about to but this guy i like this guy we're gonna equip him actually takes a little while to craft so you may have to kill the giants a couple of times but just skin them for the hide and burn that down for some time make some more steel pile in the volcano down in the well area where the skill is before you jump in you can climb up the side and get to this fence over recipe that's gonna teach you a bunch of that stuff and we like this stuff because yes you do have to be level 60 to make the handles but if you happen to get lucky and find some handles in a box or from a Sumerian somewhere it literally costs iron lizard skin and a little bit of alchemy base for a particularly decent weapon for that low amount of resources they have been slightly nerfed for sure but I still really enjoy them for a cheap weapon especially just chuck on random thralls that are around your base or to have a throw away weapons when you're out exploring and you don't care if you lose them they're a nice little recipe to hang. now proceed to turn around and throw yourself in this pit pit hole portal mm, that and you want to journey away to the goblin city that little temple down there if you've uh, watched my volcano voyage you will know the exact path if not have fun exploring it's not that hard the jumps aren't as daunting as they seem do bring some ice and some iced tea she warm in here once you're in the little temple if you want to get the stuff to remove your bracelet kill all those guys so you can make that come down and kill a little boss dude you don't need to get the obsidian stuff you just run past here a bunch of loot boxes super simple then take your little path back this way and head back to the forge spewing sparky ghoulie fire stuff everywhere these guys are quite aggressive you'll have to kill them but i don't want to be stuck <laughs> This used to sometimes mess you up too, but lava doesn't instantly kill you anymore, so you should be okay. You will need to craft the obsidian here, and that just requires some steel, which you can get from killing the guys in the volcano, and some more obsidian. It takes some time. So if you're exploring them in here for any reason, like getting hides, and you're not on a populated server on your single player, definitely put this in to cook first, and then come back and collect it later. But you can craft the obsidian weapons at home, unlike black ice ones, which you need to craft at the forge. Apparently there's new guys guys here i am um, i'm putting together a video with the, some of this new headhunter stuff so keep your eye out for that but um this might seem a bit silly seeing as we've just gone over some much more op armor and weapons one of the first ones you should definitely be coming to get is the Tafari bone because you can make an axe that does a lot more damage than anything else you can craft with or without an armor spent at that level with 16 damage compared to like this stuff or even not that guy that guy's way better but you gotta find an abyssal remnant for him that you're still gonna need at least 30 iron because you probably don't have a fancy blacksmith
blacksmith bench. He'll still need the iron to make the blacksmith bench. This guy is stone and stick. So if you like axes, come here. Get this for sure. And in the spirit of learning banners and decorations, there's a Divari banner. As uh, this video is already starting to get a tad long, if you wish to see exactly where to see the recipes in the Abyssal Remnant dungeon, you can view my separate video linked somewhere around here. There is the glow torch recipe that I'm holding, which you will also learn glowing essence in there, which you need for sorcery leveling. You are also going to learn the abyssal armor and weapons, which you, where am I going? Which you've seen before these good guys. And where's the armor at? This stuff. And the regular and epic versions of the reptilian armor. Again, as this video is running quite long and there are a lot of recipes to learn in Dagon's dungeon, that is another separate video. I have a short video linked somewhere around here as well about how to learn specifically the Lemurian axe. Because I haven't made the Dagon dungeon one yet, but that will be coming soon. So keep your eyes peeled if you're interested on where to find daggers and just how to run the dungeon in general. And just for anyone who was was still hoping that the breathing mask would work infinitely by putting it on and taking it off. They have fixed that with chapter two, which is for the best because there would be some type of exploiters out there. So thank you for everyone who made that aware and reported all that out there and all that and put in the forums. Because sometimes stuff like that, they just don't fix for a really long time. You never know what's going to go under the radar for a long time. And as it wasn't actually duping or hacking, I didn't mind using it for a little bit of dungeon running and picking up brimstone on the bottom of the thing bottom of the thing the ocean it could definitely be exploited in actual pvp facing people and stuff like that so it definitely needed to be fixed Specialist ammunition is kind of a tricky one to find. If you want acid arrows, you got to come to this cave here. Lockstone cave. I do believe it's like the first one in your parquet. When farming for the old way to get black blood pools and um, well, you still kind of have to come here to get black blood anyway. Venture through the cave and eventually you're going to get, it can be dark. So um, bring a torch because I've been stuck in a pit before on a very active PvP server with pick that I so desired and it was very scary. A bunch of guys here's some gold and silver boxes up there kill this guy in the middle and then it's 100% guaranteed drop to get specialist ammunition or oh, which is going to teach you acid arrows which are good for corroding armor on say if they're wearing um, base protection if they're wearing gas masks especially set masks the armor won't last very long you learn set masks i go into that later in the video you'll see it from the religions so you'll also get these other goodies and there's also a box here that you can touch oh my god i love tap i do find i get a love tap a lot from the legendary key boxes up here which is a legendary truncheon Oh, poor winemaker seller always getting left at last. It just, it doesn't happen on purpose. It just seems to happen. If you've seen some of my other videos, like, yeah, I don't know how this, I don't know. Maybe because I like deem it as one of the more effety dungeons. Totally worth doing if you love relic fragments and Kari still. But killing Thag, you get a chance of getting his weapons. I'm not going to do this dungeon. I'll show you where to get it. His drops are, it's not like the other guys. If I could speak. He doesn't have a tablet for you to touch. Rather that you've got to kill him a random amount of times to get scrolls and only one person gets those scrolls so if you go with and with the team only one guy gets to learn the stuff you can drop multiple things it's kind of rare kari overseer armor kari raider armor kari soldier armor and kari weaponry some of them used to be really decent for builds but again if you like to transmog your armor and like different looks they're definitely worth coming and hunting out kari weapons are pretty decent as well because they used to be double statted i haven't messed with them since 3.0 so i definitely have to check them out to see what's about with the differences there and i actually realized i didn't leave the kari dungeon to last because i almost forgot about the sinkhole hey buddy didn't mean to forget about you you were so pleasant last time i came here it's definitely nothing personal yeah um yeah that was the journey if you haven't checked out my journey to the sinkhole it's um it's a hoot try to avoid fight him if you're not willing to fight his burn bones bad and grab the dragon bone stuff if you haven't got the lemurian axe the dragon bone stuff is really good if you like assortment of different weapons all of them are really nice fairly cheap if you kill baby dragons and the dragon bone armor is some of the best if you like heavy armor light armor and medium i think there are some that are better from memory but they are still really good 
explore their different like armor wise better really good for different perk stats and builds and it's nice to have all the recipes so you can experiment with wearing different stuff because by no means do you have to wear a full set to get any set bonus you can totally just like get around like this which i could right now because i don't actually have my thrall on me and then i can wear my pretty top please do like the video it does mean a lot it shows me that this is good content that you'll want to see more of leave a content for other videos you wouldn't leave a content mm -hmm. my speaking in this episode i'm gonna have to fix that a bit i am tired it is like 1 a.m so do forgive me I'm, i haven't created much content lately so i've been trying to bust it out and um i would appreciate if you have patience with me on some of my releases which aren't quite as regular as i would like that will hopefully be improving in the future but like i was saying a like means a lot it shows me enjoy this content and please do put a comment down below to tell me anything else you wouldn't mind seeing a video of something else you might be struggling with maybe you can't find another something good base locations things like that i am totally open to suggestions or things that you guys want to actually see side note terribly sorry if i've uh, forgotten any recipes anywhere along the way i'm fairly sure i covered most things in this video i will have a attend attachment at the end of this showcasing all of the different armors and their stuff so do stay tuned by the way our video isn't quite over now we've learnt the armors, let's go through why we learnt the armors. As a bit of a disclaimer, none of these have been made with an actual good armor, they've all just been spawned in, so the potential for them is much greater than what you are going to see here, but it gives you a rough idea of what you're working with, with your experiments and whatever. And like, if you don't like the stats even, what they look like for thermagoging. Yeah, let's get to it. We're going to start with the cultist armor. This guy is a nice guy because he has three stats. I don't think any other ones particularly have three stats maybe there's a couple in there that i can't think of that we'll get to we'll see agility weapon damage follower damage and concussive damage and that's the same on all of them this is a particularly great armor because it's relatively cheap even though they recently made it use medium padding but because it's a perfected medium padding it's actually i find a little bit cheaper early game to make than the silk if you don't live near silk but anyway it used to make use light padding and was incredibly op for the armor that you got for it and stuff there's no epic version of it that i know of but it's a great armor to wear to go to cold places because you get that cold buff so to get to the snow or whatever and you also can wear it when you don't have any form of authority build to give you a helping hand on knocking out a thrall or two and for your thrall to maybe help you knock another thrall out as well because it's got that extra follower damage and agility weapon damage so it's particularly nice if you happen to be using blunted daggers moving along to some silent legion now if you have a named armor you'll be able to make the redeemed legion unlike the regular legion which you'll see in a moment it gives you plus two to both points so you'll be able to stay freshy wherever you're at cold or hot most places i don't even think you need to drink or eat anything extra we've got some strength some strength some health some stamina and some carry capacity some really nice mixes that you can do there if you don't want to wear the full set now the regular legion that you can make if you don't have a named armor it used to be just a purge armor but then they changed things but anyway again it's the exact same strength strength health health, stamina, and carry capacity, but you only get one perk against cold, so it will still be nice in, say, places like the Volcano. Then you also get options of medium armor now that they've added, I think, with the Sipta update. So it's all jumbled around. Stamina, agility weapon, strength, health, and carry capacity. And that is a lot of carry capacity, may I add, even without being made with a thrall. So they're a really nice option to have if you like wearing medium armor and you want to do um, a build that requires you to be able to carry anything in your life moving along to the light armor health strength carry capacity agility weapon and stamina and again the light armor with all that carry capacity and these next ones that i'm moving along to that you learn at the Khalil stronghold just um in front of us there they're quite unique in the fact that they add a bonus buff to them as well as the stat that they give you so we'll go through them now and we've got first the chilled godbreaker which was an addition after it's, so they originally only had the hot godbreaker and then well regular then they've added this chilled godbreaker which keeps you extra extra cool in places like the volcano so you can wear a mix of regular and chilled and get a kind of even out effect i'll show you the chilled in a uh, the regular in a second but you do get a lot less armor from the chilled for some reason now not only this giving you stamina but it also gives you a gas mask which is kind of cool you can pause if you wish to read that the chest piece is kind of mm, um it gives you bonus armor but 
allegedly helps with healing. So I never really wear that. I haven't really tested it out. It was super ugly, but now we can thermagurgy it. Maybe it might enter my rotation of armors I wear. Although Godbreaker is kind of expensive. I try to just make like the boots and the hat kind of the more useful stuff. But then we have the gauntlets or grips add um, strength damage. And they apparently uh, grant an, an additional additional strength. Agility weapon damage for the leggings and a stamina regen buff. And the boots being some of my favorite when you take damage your item that you're carrying heals. So say if you've lost some durability on this and you want to actually put a kit on it or uh, oils or whatever, you can just stand there and get smacked around a little bit by something and hold it in your hand and it will heal the item slowly. So it's a nice little save on kits. I haven't used a kit on my axe in some time because I just keep getting hit by stuff. But it also gives you some carry capacity, which is cool. Maybe along to regular Godbreaker, as you can see, it's got a bunch more armor. Same stat, same perks, only it keeps you nice and frosty. So you can stay around in like um the snow areas and stuff. Then we got the champion, who is quite an asshole to defeat herself. So I usually don't even bother. She's not worth it. I just run past her and touch her tablet. You just do not need to fight her. You've got the hat giving you stamina, the shirt with strength, the gloves with stamina, the pants with strength, and the boots with stamina. The hat is going to give you lead resistance. The shirt is going to give you removes poison, which is kind of cool these days with how, well, all the days with how OP poison is. I can't really see what these guys do. Cool. Um, The pants cleanse corruption. I know that for a fact because I used to wear them a lot to help cleanse my corruption. And then the boots are going to help against crippling. So it's an all right little um armor that could definitely come in handy situationally. Kari armor. There is no heavy armor. There is two light armors and a medium armor. I don't don't think they add any additional stuff no but they do have double perks and they used to be like super OP because of that we've got strength damage and stamina for overseer stamina strength stamina stamina strength and stamina a nice little light strength stamina build you can definitely go ham with some heavy weapons with that and for now for the radar stuff carry capacity agility agility carry capacity agility agility and carry capacity agility again a nice little one that you could do for for an agility build. And then this is the medium armor with health, stamina and health, health, stamina and health, and health. The Pride of Asia has concussive damage and follower damage, stamina, strength, health, and carry capacity at the 30 again. So again, a nice little farming one. And as far as I know, it doesn't give you any other extra perks. Then the Lemurian stuff that you get from the Witch Queen. This is a light armor with follower damage and concussive damage, follower damage, concussive damage, all the way down. So a nice little light alternative for doing some knocking out of rolls in easy areas as it used to be survival. It's quite interesting how they've changed that now. And then the medium, one of my favorite armors because it's so cheap. You can grind the already made stuff and just repair it for like three leather. You know the recipe, which now you'll do. And it's all strength now. So especially crafted with a thrall, you're going to get a lot more. It's like 580 with a good thrall, maybe something more. Much better. And it's a nice little throwaway set for how cheap it is. It doesn't matter if you die. You can go out and do pretty Pretty decent weapon damage you're using an axe or so some little pvp scuffles and you're not going to be salty if you lose it on like your dragon bone which probably took a lot more effort to graft. Yeah, you might have a little bit more armor, but yeah, I don't know. It's all situational. Then the Relic Hunter. It's light armor that's going to give you agility, carry capacity, agility, carry capacity, and agility. So again, you can mix that up with some of the other stuff if you want like a light agility build or a light carry capacity build. It's not too bad. And you can also get a bunch of it for free and grind it for silk in your grinder. That's only the regular version. These are the epic versions as well, might I add. So the regular one has slightly less armor, but I think still the same stats. More crafted with a thrall, of course. Now onto Dragon Bone. This has some of the highest armor in the game with perks as well. 20 health, 6 strength damage, health, stamina, and health. Health strength, health, stamina, and health for the medium, and for the light, health, strength, health, stamina, and health. Unlike the Legion, you don't have to like remember different combinations. You know if you want the helmet there, it's going to be the same as the helmet there. Nice and easy. And these are some of my favorite armors, the light one being great for putting into builds for different um PvP situations, the heavy being great for PvE and PvP as well if you like heavy armor. And then we got one of the first armors that we learned in this 
episode with the Black Corsair stuff. I'm not going to show the rest of the pirate stuff as you can see. I've got the fine leg on but it doesn't give you any added bonuses. So this is a light armor that gives you all agility. Pretty decent six to it rather than the three or something. But you do need to kill the Black Corsair pirates by the Booty Bay pirate ship over in the jungle to get black silk to craft it. So is it worth it? Probably not if you like the look of it maybe. Then at the Z, I didn't actually run and show you it but at the dregs which I have a different guide on you can learn the reptilian stuff which is stamina and health. It's oh it's an all right little um guy. Put that back. It's fairly cheap to craft even in the epic version apart from the medium padding and that so it's an all right if you like um stamina and health builds. Now I haven't mentioned this armor exactly in this guide because I'm doing a different guide on legendary armors and weapons but I thought I'd chuck it in here because I did spawn in the reptilian. But we got the Sobek armor which you can kill a boss dude in a cave over by the aloe fields. I haven't been there here yet on the map. I can't remember its name. I'll show you that in the actual guide. But you can grind that guy over and over again for a chance of getting this armor to drop. All health guys. For some reason the shirt is substantially less health. And I don't think it gives you anything like fancy apart from there's zero heat or cold negation. Which used to mean something when there was hot or cold armors. But now everything does everything bar like those couple up here that I showed you that had a couple of little different stats in them. But yeah, those are the different armors you can learn through these recipes that we've gone through in the game. But along with some of those armors that we learned, the religions are also kind of handy. I'll just mention a couple of the things here. The set altar in particular, if you learn that religion, you can make set pots, which are an antidote. The snake arrows, which I think you need a tier two altar now for. I think you make those in a tier one. And you'll need a tier two altar, I think, also for a setite mask, which is also a gas mask, which is a fairly cheap gas mask if you're having to put them all on your thralls and people aren't using acid arrows. But aside from learning the different feasts, which I think the Feast of Yog being the best one, one of the cheapest, especially if you have Zath learnt and you can use the Zath knife to get skulls to make bone broth, it's one of the best heals and stamina regen things that you can make. The Dicketo altar is a notable mention as well because you get the Potions of Freedom, which give you increased stamina. The Jabal Sag altar is also good because you can turn Demon Blood into regular blood if you happen to need it and a few other different bonuses you can get from that guy night vision potions and stuff and why it just told me my my bracelet is not attuned that was super weird but um i hope you all have fun going around and learning all the recipes now that you hopefully know where they are a bit better and what they might do and why it's worth even learning them until next time i hope you have an excellent day evening night morning whatever it may be wherever you may be if you found the content enjoyable do chuck up a like means a bunch also getting close to a thousand thousand subscribers so subscribe would be in heaps at the moment as well i highly appreciate it though i appreciate your watching anyway especially if you got this far as i mentioned before do chuck up a comment as well if you've got something else you'd like to see me make a guide on if you're struggling with something else or whatever i'm happy to do that for you all until next time have a good one